All right, so I just watched a movie that I haven't seen in several years. I was probably like nine or ten the last time I watched this. Maybe younger, I'm not sure. But uh, it's a movie called Naruto and the Crescent Moon Kingdom. The Guardians of the Crescent Moon Kingdom. It's an epic film. Um, I think it's the only one of the Naruto movies I've seen. Uh, I, I never watched the Shippuden ones because I didn't watch Shippuden growing up. And by the time I got into Shippuden, I was in high school and I didn't get very far. I got maybe 80 episodes in. But you're probably thinking, like, 80 episodes, that's pretty far into a TV series. Not for Naruto. Not when it's a show with, like, 500 episodes. And then there's Boruto after that. And, I mean, you got the spin-off shows. So, yeah, there's a lot of Naruto out there. I mean, the original is, like, 200 episodes. I haven't even seen all the original because, um... I'm not going to spoil anything about the show, but I will tell you, season four, you don't need to watch. It's all filler. Um, by that point, they had caught up with the manga, and they needed to give the author time to write uh, more, which is, is Shippuden is what the, the guy was... I think it's a guy who wrote Naruto. I'm not sure. But um, yeah, that's what they wrote was Shippuden. So while they're writing Shippuden... They did this, the fourth season of Naruto, and it's pretty horrible. Um, I've seen maybe half of it, and I can safely say, like, only a handful of that was worth it. The, um, I'm not gonna, this is a minor spoiler, I guess. I'm just gonna give the basic premise of one of these filler episodes. It does it doesn't really, it's not gonna spoil anything about Naruto, but for this one episode... Um, anyways, there's one with these people impersonating, uh, Rock Lee and Guy Sensei. That is, like, the best one I saw of that season. That one is totally worth watching. It's hilarious. Um, but the rest of that season I wasn't that into. I mean, there was a, a ramen episode. The ramen one I really wasn't into. Um, there's a butterfly one. I'm just giving vague premises here, but if you know what I mean about the butterfly one... I don't know if it was even a butterfly, but it was a bug. They were bug hunting is all I'm going to say. That one is, oh my god, the way it ends is so stupid. It, it pissed me off because I thought like, okay, this is like where Naruto's going, you know? And then it made me realize like, oh, I'm in for a whole season of filler. And I googled it and I was totally correct. Like this whole season's just filler and like completely pointless episodes and like so stupid. But anyways... On to the movie. The movie, I think it, it works even if you've never seen Naruto. It will spoil some stuff. Like, when I saw it as a kid, I didn't understand certain things. Because I was only on, like, season two, I think, of Naruto. And uh, I didn't understand quite why... Uh, I, I really can't talk about this without spoiling some minor stuff. So you're going to hear minor spoilers. But it really doesn't matter in the grand scheme of things. Um, you can still watch and enjoy Naruto and you're not going to get the show spoiled for you if you watch this video. But yeah, I couldn't understand why they took Rock Lee on the mission instead of Sasuke, right? Because it's Rock Lee, Sakura, and Naruto. And I was like, where is Sasuke? He's not mentioned at all. And, uh, you know, if you watch the show, you'll know why. But I just, I didn't know why. Um... And so, with this movie, I think it does have one big issue in that it is kind of pointless. It's a great movie, it's got great action, but it's very pointless. The characters they introduce in it, they never bring back, which I was disappointed to learn. I googled it after to try to see if they show up in Shippuden. They never do. Um, they, they put a character in the show with the same name as the, uh, the son. So there's a, there's a grandpa who's like the king, the prince, and then his son. Um, I hated the prince. The prince is, like, a fucking weird perv. He says some really creepy shit to Sakura at the beginning of the movie, and, uh, that just left me uncomfortable. I don't know what it's like in the English dub. I watched the Japanese one, by the way, which I regret, but I wanted to give it a try and see if it was good or not. And I, I hate the Japanese voices for Naruto. I'm usually where I like 
prefer Japanese dubs, but with Naruto, you gotta go English dub. It's English dub or nothing. Um, I grew up with those voices. That's how I hear the characters in my head. I cannot watch it a different way. Um, I've heard people say that about stuff like Dragon Ball too. Like Dragon Ball, I didn't watch it growing up. So I could watch it with the Japanese voices. I don't care. Um, I kind of prefer it. But yeah, I had one friend who like, he, he preferred the English voices for the characters. Which I totally get. Like, if you grew up with that, that's how you hear the characters. You don't want to fucking hear the Japanese voices. Um, and I, my issue, too, is, like, I feel like they characterize them way differently. And maybe it's a language thing of, like, the subtitles don't translate well. But Rock Lee is, like, not happy-go-lucky, energetic, funny guy like he is in the English dub. He's very serious. And I don't think that works for his character. He's supposed to be, like, the goofball. And, uh, yeah, even in, like, my favorite scene in the movie, um, I, I have to spoil stuff talking about this, but I'm, I'm guessing you've either seen this movie or you don't care if you're still listening at this point. But yeah, my favorite scene in the movie, and this really doesn't spoil much, but there's one scene where they're, like, all the characters are talking about this promise they made to one of their friends, and uh, it's a very epic scene in the English dub. If you if you want to see it, you can just go on YouTube and type uh, Naruto, I made a promise to a friend. It'll it, The first thing that comes up, you'll see it. And it really doesn't spoil much. I mean, it's it's part of the, the final fight, like this, this speech the characters are giving, you know, to the villains. And it's epic. But in the Japanese dub, it's so, like, it's not epic at all. Um, and... Like, they, they even say different stuff, I, I, I realize, too. The, uh, yeah, it just, it doesn't have the same impact. And I'm sure in Japanese, if you speak the language, it has so much more meaning, right? Because those things don't, it, do, it doesn't translate the same. But, um, yeah, it didn't, it didn't quite have that impact for me. And I didn't think it was the most epic moment in the film anymore. At least watching it in that version. The, uh, there was a later scene that I thought was more epic. And, uh, I, I had forgotten most of the movie going into it. That's one thing I'll say. The only thing I remembered was that scene, that it was my favorite. And it's literally been burned in my mind. I've never forgotten it. Because I remember as a kid, I related so much to Naruto. You know, it's the story about a guy who, um, he's an outcast for his differences. There's, he was born different and he's been outcasted from society. And, uh, he learns to make friends and, uh, you know, show people, like, what he's all about and stuff. And still being himself. He never, he never changes who he is. Sure, he kind of, he becomes less of a punk, but he's still always himself. Um, cause, you know, like, Nar Naruto is definitely a punk starting out. Like, he, the first thing he does is, is Griff in the show, this is episode one spoilers, so it's not, not nothing big, but he, uh, it's like the first minute of the show. He graffitis on the, what is essentially the Mount Rushmore of that universe. It's, it's a statue of all the Hokages. And, uh, if you don't know what a Hokage is, it's, it's basically like the president or whatever, their leader in that world. There's Hokages for the different villages. The, uh, so they had all the leaf village Hokages on like a Mount Rushmore and he graffitied it. Um, and that was like the first thing he does in the show. Uh, but yeah, you really see him grow as a character. By this point, he's a lot more mature. He's still got some immature things about him, um, and still some learning to do. But yeah, he's he's growing and stuff. I, anyways, I relate a lot to Naruto in the sense that I didn't really have friends, and uh, I always felt different too. I mean, being transgender, how can you not? It it's so difficult to, to find people like you, especially at that age, um, especially. And nowadays, maybe less so, you know, there's way more visibility. I think it's a lot easier for children to come out. Not that it is easy. That is the, the most difficult part about um, transitioning is coming out. Everything else just gets easier. But, um, yeah, that, uh, it, it's tough growing up that way. Um, especially in the 2000s. I mean, you know, I'm sure it's the same now, like kids kids do this but back then you know they just you call anything stupid gay 
if it was stupid, it was gay. So, you know, being transgender is like the ultimate form of stupid. Not that I believe that, but like as a kid, you know, it, it's easy to have that internalized transphobia um, and kind of be full of self-hate. And Naruto definitely feels that way about himself. Because um, he has the nine-tailed fox inside of him. And uh, he, you know, it's not something he asked for. It's just how he was born. It literally, well, actually, it's not how he was born. But it happened, like, right after his birth. By the way, this is all stuff you learn in the first episode. So I'm really not spoiling much. But yeah, his dad sealed this, this, uh, their, ch their chakra beasts. I think that's what they're called. But the one that was sealed inside of Naruto was the nine-tailed fox. And uh, he he feels very alone because of it. Um, which I'm sorry. I did kind of spoil stuff there, actually. That would spoil stuff from Shippuden. I'm sorry for that. But um, what's it called? If you know, you know. Um, anyways. So he has this beast inside of him. And... Uh, He's different, and also it causes him to have anger and stuff. He get he gets angry and he can't control himself. And yeah, I had anger issues growing up, which I have a lot better control of now. But as a kid, yeah, I was not always, but one, once I was around high school, I started getting really angry and stuff, and only really towards my mom uh, and my dad. I never had anger issues towards friends and stuff like that. I was really chill and stuff. But yeah, my family just could bring out the worst in me. So I always related to Naruto, uh, especially that one scene where you see him at school and he's all alone on the swings and everyone else is hanging out and stuff and he's just alone. That was my experience. I mean, I remember kindergarten and if you knew me in kindergarten, I know, I, don't, I doubt anyone watching this knew me, but I know some people do. Um, like my One of my friends, Tristan, um, who I don't talk to anymore, I don't know what he's up to. I haven't talked to him in ages. Uh, I say ages, but... Um, it's been like two or three years, maybe. Um, he knew me since kindergarten, which is really crazy to think about. And I knew this one girl, um, McKenna Cox. I think, I'm pretty sure I knew her since kindergarten. But yeah, a few people who I went to school with I had known for a long time. Which is pretty crazy to think about. Because we, we ended up at a different school in the end. But, um, what's it called? Yeah, I knew those people most of my childhood. Because my school was uh, K through 12. Well, the one I switched to. I switched there in fourth grade. So, yeah, I was with those people for a while. Anyways, um, yeah, I, I remember being alone, and uh, I just, I'd have my sippy cup, I'd drink that and stuff, and I'd sit alone. But yeah, I didn't really connect to other kids, because I didn't like the stuff they liked. They liked Call of Duty, I wasn't allowed to play Call of Duty. They liked sports, I didn't like sports. Um, and I need to, oh, I don't know if this is going to shut my video off. I'm just going to start my car, because I don't want my phone to die mid -video. Um, I remember I'm around 10%. But yeah. The, this movie was just incredible. The, the fight scenes are awesome. Once shit goes down, it really gets great. Like, when they're fighting. Some stuff in the middle kind of drags. It, there's some stuff that probably you didn't really need. I don't care that much about uh, the prince and, you know his struggles and I didn't uh I mean the the kid you know he's he's got his moments I like him I I um I just thought like what I have to spoil stuff by the way for the movie uh, continuing so just remember I've already been spoiling stuff but I'm probably gonna get into like heavier spoilers here um why didn't they give him arrows sooner like he has a bow he clearly demonstrates that he's very good with the bow but they don't give him real arrows. And it's like... I didn't even realize how he got a real arrow at the end. Because he has a real arrow. But I guess a soldier gives him it at some point. And I didn't even realize that. I, I guess that's a more subtle detail. Because I read that on the wiki. I didn't realize that. Yeah, why did no one give him an arrow? And it's like the soldier who does it. It's not like Naruto or, you know, Kakashi or one of them. Anyways, they should... Because, like, literally, there's multiple points where he could have, like done some sh crazy shit you know and he just doesn't have his arrows like literally he would have killed one of the bad guys if he had arrows at one point and he, he just has this fucking fake plunger arrows 
Um, I like the villains in this movie. I thought they were pretty cool. Um, the one of them like kills people, which I was like, whoa. You don't really expect that because I, I mean, Naruto is a show that has death and stuff, but yeah, I generally think of it more as a kid show. But maybe you know, it's because it was the movie and stuff, and it it it's uh. It wasn't, like, four kids do, doing this stuff. Although, I'm sure they did the dub. Um, they, but they change stuff when they bring the shows over for the English adaptation. So I wondered if Naruto was, like, maybe less bloody and, like, violent when it got adapted. I don't know. But this movie, like, when Rock Lee kills the bad guy, that dude was, like, bleeding out his mouth. And I was like, whoa. That's, like, way more gory than I'm used to seeing in Naruto. Like, usually if they die, they're just kind of there on the floor, like, looking all fucked up and stuff. But they don't bleed and stuff. If they do bleed, it's like they get a cut and a little bit of blood comes out. But yeah, this movie kind of... it. I guess it shocked me in that regard. Not shocked me, but just surprised me. Um, and yeah, I, I liked the villains a lot. I liked, uh, I liked Rock Lee's weapons. He had these nunchucks. I was surprised because I don't remember him having nunchucks in the show and I never saw him use them in Shippuden so I don't know if that was like a just for the movie thing but yeah he had these nunchucks that were really sick like um normally he does the he does the shit with his band-aids but he did it with the nunchucks so I was like whoa that's pretty cool um one thing I didn't understand though was why he he waits so long to take his ankle weight. Well, he doesn't even take the ankle weights off, but I guess he had nunchucks inside of the ankle weights. He leaves the ankle weights on during the fight. Which, as a kid, too, I never realized they were ankle weights. Because I kind of skipped a bit of season one. Um, and you learn that it's a pretty epic moment. Oh, I'm sorry. I just spoiled stuff for the show. Anyways, I'm sure you've seen Naruto and stuff if you're watching this at this point. Or maybe you haven't and you just don't care. But if you haven't seen Naruto, you should watch it. And uh, if you don't want to watch it, just watch, at least watch um, the third season. Because uh, that, I think that would convince anyone to become a Naruto fan. It does have filler. It does get kind of boring at times, but literally like... The, the Choji Jirobo fight in season three is like literally my favorite fight in any anime. It's so epic. It makes me cry every time I watch it. Um, it's so emotional. And uh, I mean, Choji is definitely my favorite character just because of that fight. He's so fucking badass. And uh, I also really like Rock Lee and Neji. But yeah, Choji is just so sick. He wasn't ever in the game I played. I played Clash Ninja 2. You can't play as Choji in that game, which sucks. Why didn't they put him in the game? He he appears, but he only appears in... Um, I think her name is Inu. I can't fucking remember her name. She's the one who, like, transports her mind into other people's bodies. Um, and she's a cunt. <laughs> um, but yeah, she, uh, she summons Choji during her ultimate move ultimate jitsu or whatever um so that's the only time you see choji in that game it's kind of sad he, he should have been a playable character um clash of ninja 2 by the way that is a good fucking game even if you don't like naruto that it's just a good fighting game it's like probably my favorite no second favorite naruto game because i really like um what's it called the broken bond i think that's my favorite that was like an open world Naruto game, which is pretty sick. And you could play as multiple different characters. And uh, the the way you cast Jutsu is so cool in that game. You use the thumbsticks and you like push them in different directions at the same time. So it can be like that, that, and it feels like you're actually like doing hand signs. Like you got to quickly input them. It's pretty sick. I used to know how to do the um, the fireball Jutsu that Sasuke does. I think this is like one of the hand signs he does kind of looks like a penis there um what's it called i know they do this and he like he blows through it to like shoot fire um yeah i can't remember the whole thing i used to be able to do it they also do i i don't know if i could do it that yeah like that at one point 
or I don't know. I can't raise my arms high enough to show you, but yeah, I remember some of the hand signs. I tried to learn them because I was really into Naruto. I still am. I like Naruto, but I haven't watched in a while. This is the first time I've seen anything Naruto related in so long. Uh, but it's just a great show. Easily my second favorite anime. My favorite anime is Kaiji Ultimate Survivor, which I'm sure I'll do a video on Kaiji someday. Um, but yeah, you gotta watch Kaiji if you've never seen it. It's so good. Um, yeah, my, my biggest issue with the movie is definitely that they don't carry over this stuff. Like, it doesn't matter. Because Naruto at the end says, like, I promise we will always be friends. And that's like a big theme throughout it. Like, Naruto promising to always be this kid's friend. And then he never reappears or is like, and he promises to visit him and stuff. And like, no, if you don't follow through on that promise, it, he should have reappeared in the show. And I hope he does at some point because it'd be nice to get some closure and see like what's happening with these characters. Although it really doesn't matter. I mean, they're just made for the movie, obviously. Um, yeah, I don't know if I have much more to say. I, uh... I just, I really like the movie. Um, despite its flaws, I really like this film. And if you're a Naruto fan and you've never watched the Naruto movies, I mean, I can't speak for the other two, but this one was really good. You should check it out. There, there were three made. There was um, something like Stone, Stone something, Stone Temple, I don't remember. And there was also um, Clash in the Land of the Hidden Snow, I think was the other one. And I need to see those. I'm pretty sure Sasuke's in those ones. Because those were made... Yeah. I'm pretty sure he's in those ones. I want to see uh, see them. I like Sasuke. He was my favorite character growing up, I think. But um, he's kind of a bitch. That's how I feel about him now. Uh, I don't really like Sasuke. He's a bitch. But um, anyways. Yeah, Naruto for life. That's all I got to say. I love that show. And, uh, I, I want to rewatch it at some point. I'd like to also, uh, redub it and cut out the filler and upload it to my channel as, like, movies. Because I think that would be cool to do. Um, especially season three. I've just really wanted to do that with season three. So I have a way to watch it without having to sit through the boring-ass filler. Because, like, every fight, they'll be fighting. And, it'll, like, flashback. And then you watch a flashback for five minutes. And then they're fighting. And then it's like, okay, we're going to jump over to these characters just talking about shit that doesn't matter. And then jump back to the fight. And it's so annoying. You can't just sit there and enjoy the fight. But yeah, like season three, every fight is so epic. They, um, this, this, I'm going to give some minor spoilers just talking about the villains. The villains of that season, they're, they're called the Sound Ninja Five. They are, like, easily my favorite Naruto villains. They're so cool. Every single one of them has, like, just such badass powers. And, like, they just get more and more badass as they keep revealing them. And then the final one, Kimimaru, is, like, easily... His fight with Rock Lee is one of the best. It's so good. One of my favorites in that show, too. Probably my second favorite. Um, yeah. That's all I'm going to say. I'm going to end it here. I know this was a pretty spoiler-filled video, which is not normal for me. I normally don't like spoiling movies. But um, I figured with this one, probably a lot of people watching either have seen it or they don't care to watch it and they just want to hear what I have to say or um, they never were going to watch it. Because it's Naruto. I mean, it's not niche, but it's kind of niche. It's anime. Not everyone's into that. I mean, I think anime is more popular these days than it was in the in the 2000s when I was growing up. Although, you know, Cartoon Network had that whole, uh, I think it was called the Toonami block. That, yeah, so, uh, you know, who knows? But anime is definitely more popular these days, right? You, you see it more and more and stuff. I didn't see it as much growing up. Um, Maybe I'm wrong there. Maybe anime is, is just as popular as it ever was. But yeah, I feel like uh, around the mid-2000s, late 2000s was when anime started really popping off and getting more popular. And it's only only gets more and more popular with time. Although I don't, I don't hear about it as much nowadays. Maybe that's because I kind of fell off keeping up with anime. I don't know. You know, 
with all this stuff, I could be wrong. I could just be spewing bullshit, but um, that's that's true of anything anyone says. Anyways, see you guys. I hope you enjoyed. Um, I I don't really know how to structure these. They're not reviews. I don't think of it as a review, but I'm just giving my thoughts on the movie. I you see, you see I don't t even title it review. I just title it I I watched blank. But yeah, I'm gonna start doing these anytime I watch a movie. So yeah. See ya!